Hello. My name is Jessie, and I am from Little Lemuria. I started a Instagram business about crystals um, not quite a year ago now. Uh, it's been a passion of mine for as long as I can remember. Um, and since I've gotten more into the business end of it and sort of seen some of the misinformation that's out there and questions that people have, I have decided to start hosting my own webinars, this being the first one, and our topic is Lemurian Seed Crystals. Um, so again, you can find me on Instagram at Little Lemuria Gems, and you can find us on the web at littlelemuria.com. So I'm going to start with letting everybody know the basics that Lemurian seed crystals um, are nothing more than a regular quartz crystal. Their mineralistic composition is no different uh, than that of any other common quartz. Um, I want to more discuss today their significance in mystic lore, uh, their rarity, and the localities that they are from. Um, and then there's some features of Lemurian seed crystals that make them special, um, give them a special energy, and make them very desirable among crystal healers. If you haven't done any reading at all about Lemurians, you need to know a few basic things to bring you up to speed. Um, they're called Lemurian seeds because the the story says that they were found planted in the sand, in loose sand, tipped down, which is very unusual. So they were deposited in the sandy soil with their points facing down as if someone from above had pushed them into the soil, which is a, you know, it's a rather odd configuration. Um, and I had originally pictured this as like some sort of a desert with loose sandy soil and someone sort of poking them in. Um, but it's more if you picture a mine shaft or a mine tunnel, and along that tunnel um, underground, they're going to find some loose soil, and in that loose soil, they're going to find kind of rows of crystals side by side like that. Um, so the original mine was opened by Americans on Brazilian land in the 40s. After World War II, the Americans left and the mines weren't reopened again until the 1990s by Brazilians. And it was during that time that we get the Lemurian uh, seed crystals that we see on the market today. Um, so the connection of the mined crystals to Lemuria came from the American mineral dealer David Geiger. And this dealer was so struck by the unusual formations of these crystals that he sent samples off to a colleague named Christina Raphael. So it was Christina who ultimately connected the crystals to Lemuria and coined them Lemurian seed crystals. Christina is a well-known author who began her writings on crystal healing um, in the early 1980s. So to understand why Lemurian crystals are so desirable in the crystal healing realm um, and among mystics, you first have to have a little bit of background on Lemuria as a place. Uh, so the Lemurian race was a group of beings that existed on Earth on the lost continent called Mu. Um, and that continent and the continent of Lemuria, as some people call it, those are, that's the same thing. But the, the real name for that lost continent is Mu. Um, this continent is said to have mostly sunk around 3000 BC when a comet came very close to Earth and caused a series of catastrophic environmental events. Some of these events were meteor showers, um, volcanic activity, seismic earthquakes, and massive tsunamis. So that's kind of a big, big deal. So all this is going on when we lost this continent, so the story goes. Uh, so this is where historical philosophy and mystic lore stray from each other. 
Um, at, at this point, it said that the Lemurian race fled to neighboring countries, um, most notably Tibet, um, the Himalayas, India. So some people say, I should say some scholars say, some legitimate people who write on this say that this could have been the dawn of what we know of as Hinduism and Buddhism, which I will buy that. Um, I think that's a really good assumption that I can go there in my thinking. So the Lemurians were an etheric being, a race of etheric beings, um, said to be aligned with the source of all. So in today's terms, you could think of them like a Buddha, much like a Buddha. They existed on Earth, um, interacting intimately with their surroundings and with nature. So it's an entire race of spiritually enlightened beings completely interconnected to universal consciousness. Uh, they were the light of the universe and were said to be anchored to Earth by sacred crystals. Um, existing in what thousands of years ago would have been a really different earth than you or I um, are thinking of today. I don't think it would be possible to really wrap our minds around what kind of earth that was. Um, so whether these people were totally human, um, whether they were some version of human, a prototype version of human, I don't know. That is kind of up for debate. So where does all the information about a lost civilization come from if there's not really documented history, obviously? That's kind of important to touch on. Uh, one of the most credible sources about Lemuria is from the legendary late 19th and early 20th century Theosophical School. Um, so a prominent group of spiritual leaders claim to have clairvoyant insight to the history of the human race. Um, so that, that was kind of the dawn of spirituality and that transcended documented history. They gathered their information about the timeline of human development from a direct experience with the Akashic record. So I'm just really briefly going to mention what the Akashic record is. So that's because some people, including myself, when I was reading this in certain areas was a little bit lost. The Akashic record is said to go beyond human history and is universal in nature. So scholars of the Hindu Vedas, which are the oldest written sacred scriptures on the planet, suggest that the ancient rishis who transcribed the Hindu Vedas were recording what they found in the Akashic records. So Akashic records, you can think of them as like a, a vast ethereal library. So they would contain all of humanity's thoughts, works, and deeds, which has been impressed upon the substance of the cast universal field of life force energy filling all time space. So that's, I know that's a lot of words, um, and you might have to rewind and listen to that one twice. But so that if you don't, I've never heard of the Akashic Records, that's your briefing. Um, so we could discuss the Lemurian civilization just based on all these interesting facts for a really long time. It would be a whole different lecture, but I really want to get to crystals, so we'll move on. Um, I would encourage you to maybe think of the Lemurians like Rudolf Steiner um, has wrote about them. He is a world-renowned scholar, founder of the Waldorf Education and Biodynamic Agriculture Developer, and he describes them as a born magician in all fields of lower human activities. Uh, so these beings were taught secret techniques, giving them the ability to control the forces of nature by direct contemplation. Uh, it has, it's been written that Lemurians are to credit for the first form of human language, which today, if you were to think of it in retrospect, might be more like what we think of as a song or somebody humming or, um, you know, like a lyricless song, a uh, series of changing tones, rhythms, meaningful cadences. Um, so if you want to go deeper into the Lemurian civilization's history, Rudolf Steiner has a book called Cosmic Memory, and that would be the place to go for that. Because I want to talk about crystals. Um, 
Yes, and I have a lot of examples here. I don't have all the examples of different Lemurians, but I have several, and I'm excited to show you what I do have. Uh, so we know Lemurians could be to credit for, the, for teaching enlightenment through nature. Um, they might have developed a prototype to the first human language, and who knows what else they were taught in these mystery spiritual schools. Um, so the crystal aspect of it does enter the scene here. Um, the crystals that I have on the table are all Brazilian Lemurian seed crystals, which were the first Lemurian find that was what was coined Lemurian was in Brazil. Um, there are other notable discoveries that are considered Lemurian crystals, um, most notably being Colombia and Russia, and then the Himalayan mountains. So all of the crystals on the table now, though, are from the Cerro do Cabral Mountains of Brazil. Um, I would love to do another talk on the Colombian and Russian Lemurians, but those are challenging little boogers to obtain, as are many of these, but I've been working at this a bit longer. So mineralogists say that Lemurian crystals are example of the crystalline structure created by the muzzo crystal growth habit. Um, that's a term that was established, actually muzzo is, was in Colombia. So that's kind of ironic. Um, we call it in the trade laser wand. Laser wand and the muzzo habit are interchangeable. So the defining characteristics of these would be the horizontal serrations of the shaft that everyone's very familiar with, with Lemurians. I'm going to grab an example here. Um, Lemurians tend to have more sacred geometry features than regular other quartz crystals. I shouldn't call them regular. They're all fascinating. So this one, if you can see here, if you were to cut a cross section, the cross section would even be um, hexagonal, which is pretty cool. So that hexagon shape is reoccurring over and over in many of the Lemurian features. I hope that this is focusing well enough. For our purposes to show off these awesome features. So here's some of these lines I'm talking about. And then this one is actually called an extreme muzzo habit because it has three faces. So if you can see the top there actually only has three faces. It comes to a, triang a triangular tip there, which is just super crazy to me. Um, and this is the oh, this is actually a tangerine Lemurian. So this is from the new Lemurian mine. There are two Lemurian mines that are most notable the original Lemurian mine and the new Lemurian mine um, and the new Lemurian mine if I could say that ten more times um, is where a lot of the colored Lemurians come out of a lot of them and and the newer obviously new Lemurian mine a lot of the new finds are coming out of there and they tend to also be a little bit smaller from there so the the structure of the Lemurian laser um, the laser wand makes them a perfect amplifier for concentrating the life force energy. Um, but the laser wand's not the only structure that goes with goes hand in hand with Lemurians. So I want to do the triagonal symmetry next. This one is actually a seven-sided triag uh, triagonal symmetry. So these are exceptionally developed terminations. I don't know if you can count the sides here as the light hits it. Um, so they feature three faces that are five, six, or seven-sided. And these faces are opposed by tiny, perfect triangles. So here's the opposing triangle. Here's a seven-sided face. Opposing triangle. Seven-sided face. These are also called Tao crystals in the metaphysical world and world of crystal healing. They're called Tao crystals. And I should mention that these Lemurians are a bit different. Lemurians aren't usually the beauty queens of the crystal world. Um, these are exceptionally clear for Lemurian. They're not all this way. And every other side has been polished to show how clear they are. So the sturations have been left, left intact, left alone. And then every other side, this is a polished side, 
has been polished. Just so you can see how clear the crystal is because these are very exceptional clarity on these. So that's the triagonal symmetry. Uh, these are also called trans channelers. They're very complex crystal. Um, the next one would be a five-sided face opposed by a triangular face. And I have to grab this. I don't think I labeled one, but I'm certain that there's one here. Yes, here's one. So this is called an Isis face, which I absolutely love. Super, I think it's just a classic crystal form. And then this one has taken some damage to the back, so you're not going to be able to see. But this, the five-sided Isis face is always opposed by, on directly on the back, by a small triangle. Uh, so this would, these crystals have a deeper connection to the Divine Mother in her aspect as Isis, Queen of the Stars. So this is another special, very feminine crystal, and Lemuria is actually connected uh, to some feminine energy as well. So the next one I have is a seven-sided face opposed by a triangular face, and these are called channeling crystals. This is a channeling crystal. I'm going to take this sticker off here. This is a channeling crystal. seven-sided face and then opposite that face is the tiny triangle so these crystals are said to help establish a deeper connection to our guides and higher dimensions and beings inhabiting the spiritual world so if you're really trying to connect with the Lemurian people as beings as a race um, this this would be a great crystal for you this crystal as of when I'm doing doing this talk right now is actually still available on our website and has some magnificent lines it's a very large beautiful channeling crystal um, the, the next one the next prominent structure I have an example of here um, this is from my collection is the Dauphine habit um, this is an old name for the French Alps and these crystals have a large rhombohedral face, which is formed because the largest face, which is here, if I can get the light to pick it up nicely, which is here, grew slower than the rest of the crystal. Typically, these crystals have a rough side opposite the very smooth, large face. So this side is actually really rough. It's like sandpaper. And it's covered with other smaller crystals and etchings. Hopefully you can see this with my lighting here. You can definitely see how it's got this other crystal sticking out here. So the precipitations, which these little guys are called, are caused by the same environmental changes that occurred to cause the uneven growth rate of the faces. These are said to transmit large beams of energy. Um, so that's a contrast to the laser which is a very concentrated beam of energy. These are said to transmit large beams of energy. Uh, they're powerful, the most powerful transmitter um, in the Lemurian world of crystals and are highly prized. The precipitations um, in the trade are often referred to as barnacles, barnacle crystals. The next one I want to talk about is transmitter formations. They have a really easy to distinguish look, at least I think so. Um, I think they look like a crystal monorail. And it's, it's actually a pretty good way to reference them, what they do energy-wise and metaphysically as well. So I have two examples of this. And these are 737 crystals. Seven, no, sorry, strike that. These are 373 crystals, 373 crystals. So easy to identify with that very distinguished look. Um, and then we're gonna, you can see we have seven faces, three faces, seven faces. And then on the back here um, is going to have only five sides, only five sides on the back. The difference between six and seven is very easy to miss. So count your sides carefully to see if you have a true transmitter Lemurian. Um, these are also very desirable for light workers 
and you can think of them as the doubly amplified channelers. Doubly amplified channelers. So here's our channeler, and then this one has two, two channels here. Okay. So there's one more topic, other than I do have a couple of crystals out here to show. Um, I'm going to do a whole different talk on these type of features, but you'll hear people talk about time links or windows to the past or a time link to the past, and there's um, lots of opposing views on what they actually um, stand for, how to use them in meditation. But this is an example of a time link to the past. So it's facing that way, it's slanted to the left, and this little box is in no way part of the faces of the crystal. It is not connected, it is hanging out below there. Um, so I have another example here. This crystal has a time link to the future. Let me see if I can get the light to pick it up so you can see it because this crystal is super clear, like ridiculously so. So that little lit up part right there that's slanting to the right, that's not a part of any of the faces of the crystal, that's the time link to the future. And then when you hear people talk about a window, this is the window, the perfect diamond, also not, not a part of the faces of the crystal. That would be a window. So these guys are similar to windows and they have four sides, but they're always slanted one direction or the other. Um, also keys, you hear that term a lot. A key is usually a hexagonal shape depression into the crystal. So this is a golden healer Lemurian with a key in the side here. Also, I'm going to, again, do a whole nother talk on this, but opposing views. Some of these say this is to um, remind the user, uh, wh whoever's using this for healing or meditation, to not let anything encroach on their energy or take a piece away from them. Other people think of it more as a key uh, to some knowledge that we don't have, that we currently don't have and we need. And by meditating on them, you can unlock that knowledge with the key. So either way makes a lot of sense to me. A lot of opposing views and what things stand for. And I always encourage people to, to hang out with their crystals and decide for yourself what they mean to you. So the last thing is I want to talk about some Scarlet Temple Lemurians. Uh, this was a find in 2013, and it's a very unique and significant because there are not many of these floating around. They're really desirable to have. There are no more of them being found. They're also called strawberry Lemurians. Um, their hallmark, I showed a lot of these at the beginning, their hallmark feature is the rosy hematite skin that they have. Um, so they have a really beautiful warm glow. Mystics believe that these particular Lemurian seeds were used by the high priestesses of Lemuria. So this conclusion came about, I don't know if you can see how red these are from afar. Anyway, this, this conclusion came about partially due to their color, because even today, this is a color that's associated with royalty and with higher up spiritual leaders, um, this sort of deep red color. And they do look like they have been used above the surface a great deal. There's a lot of etchings that come with these. There's a lot of extra little bumps and nodules. A lot of them are starberry crystals. I actually just realized I left one of them in the other room, so I won't be able to show you the one that is full of etchings. Uh, this one has some like record keeper type triangle markings on the back. Again, my, I'm going to have to perfect this lighting thing. So these have lots of really interesting stories to tell. I feel like they have interesting stories to tell. They're, again, not the most beautiful things in the world. You're not going to find a scarlet temple that is going to knock your socks off with beauty. They truly look like they have been used. Um, this one here has a hexagonal depression that's really oddly shaped. It doesn't even look like a normal key would look. A lot of them still have lines. This has some more geometrical shapes down there. There's another one that you can see the, the 
sort of hematite skin has little holes and gaps in it. And this hexagonal key has another triangular shape going through it. These are absolutely stunning. Some of these, as of today, are still on our website, but I'm not sure how long they will be there. This one had another crystal interference. You can see the depression of another crystal into it and how the back is covered in these little dots. Really cool, really cool crystals. So this is a very unique find. Um, the markings can be interpreted as spiritual messages. A lot of the crystals are starberries, like I mentioned, and they may have been in possession by members of the Lemurian community that were in communication with other star systems. So if you're a collector, whether or not you um, really like to dive deep into the history of Lemuria, or if you more just like to collect rare crystals, these are like, these are for everybody. <laughs> There's nothing about these that aren't very cool and super mysterious. I absolutely love them. This one has, I don't know if you can see this. Let's see if I can get a, a good view here. This has lots of triangles and etchings on this side. Gorgeous. So there's not been any other Scarlet Temple finds or Strawberry Lemurians since that 2013. Um, they, you can look at them under a loop and find even more little hieroglyphs and noticeable little markings and etchings. That goes for almost any of the Lemurians. I also have some Tangerine Lemurians that are smaller, still have the serrations and beautiful little markings. This one here I grabbed because it has a huge, huge time link in the side here for being such a tiny little crystal. I thought that was very cool. Quartz is obviously still used today to store information, so it would be hard to argue that it was totally a load of malarkey to say that these crystals can't hold any type of ancient wisdom. Uh, they were meant to, some, a lot, most people say uh, that they were meant to come to the surface at this time, during a time of crisis for our Earth. Uh, the Lemurian people were so deeply connected and intertwined with nature. So it's, I, I feel, in my opinion, that that could very much be true and that they do carry with them a message of oneness and a message of love, which is something everybody can use more of. Hopefully they fall into the right hands and those of us who do create a sense of community with each other in the crystal community we can continue to learn together and grow together uh, I want to continue to do my own research and share with you what I find I'm certainly not an authority and a lot of the things that I will talk about in the future are opinion based and they're compiled from reading many different websites and books and gathering knowledge that way seeing how many different things match up I'll definitely present information um, if it's only one-sided I will say so um, I'll try and always cite my sources and I hope that you continue to join me in learning about more of these incredible crystals and if you could this is a brand new YouTube channel so it would mean the world to me if you would follow our channel and leave some comments uh, and I will definitely be putting in our newsletter on our website what our next topic is going to be and when to expect webinars to be released uh, they won't all be crystal education some of them are going to be interviews. I'll be doing an interview with a Herkimer miner, um, interview with a silversmith. Uh, so I'm going to try and just cover a lot of topics, and usually there's a lot more laughter <laughs> going on in anything that I have <laughs> put out there on the Internet. So I'm sure there will be a lot of goofiness, too. 
Um, but I thank you again for listening and I hope that you took something out of it and you're even more in love with the Lemurians you have and are more educated to go out there and get uh, a Lemurian if you don't have one already. I definitely encourage it. So thank you all. Much love.